Hey guys, and welcome back to another True Crime Pillow Talk episode with me, Kristen. This is the last case for this season, so it took me a little bit longer to get it uploaded, but here we are. I will be taking about two weeks off preparing my YouTube channel, True Crime Pillow Talk, obviously. So when we return, you will have both a YouTube video and or a podcast to choose from to listen to, or you can listen to both. Um, so exciting, but enough of that, and let's jump into our case. Today we'll be talking about Tony Alvin Abels. He was born Tuesday, December 28th, 1954, in St. Petersburg, Florida. He is a Capricorn, and according to, to research, he is 5'9". He was born to Clyde Abels, and his mother left in the 1960s due to the abuse from his father. Tony had seven brothers and sisters, and when the mother left, it placed terrible strains on the children. Growing up, Tony was considered outgoing, a friendly kid. He played the violin, and it's said that he was very good at it. He started running away, though, when he was 13 years old and often disappeared for months. In 1970, Tony was 15 years old and killed a man during a robbery in St. Petersburg, Florida. He was arrested and pled guilty to first-degree murder in March of 1971, and he got a life sentence. But it does not end there. They let him go after 12 years in state prison, and he was released on parole and got a job as a construction worker. On June 25th, five months after his release, he broke into an apartment in Worcester, Massachusetts, and the victim was Adeline McLaughlin. She was 83 years old and a retired widow. He broke her window and climbed in and suffocated her with a pillow, then burglarized her apartment. Her cause of death was choking and asphyxiation, and the neighbors in the community were shocked by this death. Um, They considered Adeline as a mysterious but friendly person. For the next few years, Tony actually was arrested for petty crimes, um, but he would get arrested, go to jail for a few days, and then get out. And on February 14th, 1987, Abel's sexually assaulted and murdered his 31-year-old girlfriend at the time, Deborah Kisser. Last known appearance of Deborah, it's either Deborah or Deborah, Sorry, but I always say Deborah with the way that it's spelled um, because I grew up with a girl whose name was spelled D-E-B-O-R-A-H. And um, her name was not Deborah. It was Deborah. So sorry if I mis- mispronounced that, but Deborah or Deborah Kisser. The last known appearance of Deborah was the day before February 13th, 1987 at the payphone in front of the apartment building. She was actually found in only a blouse and a jacket by someone walking along a path near Roser Park Bridge, and it's said that her legs were covered in bruises and she had a pair of blue jeans lying beside her body. She was romantically involved with Abel's, therefore he was not arrested at the time as a suspect in her murder. On June 4, 1990, 48-year-old Marilyn Burns and Abel's were drinking at their home, well, it was actually at uh, Marlene's apartment, and in, a, and an argument broke out. Tony then pushed Burns down the stairs and started beating and kicking her to death. He then left the apartment and was seen wiping blood, blood off of his hands by a witness who already called the police to report a dismest, domestic dispute. And when the police arrived and arrested Tony on the spot. They charged him with first-degree murder without bail at the Pinellas County Jail. At first, he was sentenced to die in the electric chair for killing Burns. However, two years later, his sentence was commuted to life imprisonment by Justice Barb Barker, the reason being that Abel suffered from a mental health issue. Um, This is said to be a claim corroborated by his brother Anthony, who stated their childhood was rocky and their father abused their mother to the extent that she abandoned the family. Up until 2006, both the McLaughlin and Kisser murders were considered unsolved, 
but when detectives submitted Abel's DNA to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, it matched evidence found on both women's bodies. Abel was actually not charged with killing Kisser since they were romantically involved, but officials considered the case closed. He was booked for the McLaughlin murder and has yet to be charged. And based on the state's, the, sorry, based on statements from the police mayor, Michael, uh, sorry, police major, Michael Poots, I don't know how to say his last name. There was a strong possibility that Abel's could be responsible for other crimes in the community for which he has yet, yet to relate to. Currently, he is still in prison at Charlotte Correctional Institute in Punta Gorda, Florida, and while researching these cases, I found that he actually has a net worth of about $1 to $5 million, and his source of income lists successful, successful killer as of 2021 statistics. So, this case um, is a little bit shorter than normal, but um, there's a lot of detail in here on this one. I find it really strange that being a successful killer, um, you get paid for. It was also stated that the reason he had a net worth previously to being put in prison of three to five million dollars, if I'm not mistaken, was due to the fact that he sold Yeezys. Um, I don't recall Yeezys being a part of the 1980s, but okay. Um, so yeah, that is the last case of the season. Thank you all for tuning in. I will be back in about two weeks. Um, just gives me enough time to do school, uh, obviously work full time and work on my YouTube to make it, I don't know, successful, I guess you can say for all of you. Um, thank you all again for the continued support. Um, I really do appreciate it and I will be back with season two. See you all then. Thank you for listening. Bye. Mm-hmm.